Welcome to the Kentucky ABRI modules on Tier 1 PBIS. In previous modules, we discussed setting up a PBIS team, predicting student failures, and developing teaching strategies to prevent these failures. In this module, we'll be talking about encouraging positive behavior or how to use positive reinforcement in PBIS. In terms of the four key components of PBIS, encouraging positive behavior is another piece of prevention as it is considered a part of teaching. Remember, effective instruction requires feedback on behavior. If a student does not receive feedback in a way they understand it, it is impossible for learning to take place. In the next module, we finish off this component with a discussion of responding to misbehavior. Here are some of the big ideas for responding to behavior within a PBIS system. First, acknowledging student success is critical to effective instruction, and this needs to be discussed and agreed upon by all adults. There is a tendency for some adults to think that positive feedback is unnecessary or even counterproductive. It's important to talk through this logic and make sure your staff is on board with these strategies before implementing a reinforcement system. We'll talk more about that later. Second, keep it simple. Use the most effective and efficient method of positive feedback. Don't use tickets, stickers, or candy if you don't have to. Oftentimes, verbal acknowledgement is the easiest manner of providing feedback, and it can be as effective as any other method if it's used consistently. However, some students, such as English language learners and those with autism, may have difficulty understanding verbal acknowledgement and may benefit from visual indications of praise, such as high fives or tangible items like tokens or stickers. Which brings us to our last point. Feedback must be formative, delivered throughout the day, rather than only at the end of tasks, and must occur daily, even when adults are in a bad mood. If anything related to PBIS is going to cause a debate among your staff, it's likely going to involve your reinforcement system. So take some time at the conclusion of this module to discuss these issues and see how your team feels about the use of these techniques before you design your system. Begin with the definition of logic and reinforcement. Reinforcement is simply any consequence that follows a behavior that makes that behavior more likely to continue in the future. Saying thank you after a student opens the door can be a form of reinforcement. Giving a kid a thumbs up or a pat on the back after they work through a difficult problem, assuming it makes that kid want to work hard under similar circumstances in the future, that's reinforcement. Therefore, reinforcement does not mean that we are bribing our students or paying them to do something that they should have an intrinsic desire to do naturally. All it means is that we are creating an environment where appropriate behavior results in beneficial consequences for our students. Second, reinforcement is not an add-on for instruction. It is an inherent and critical component. To help people understand, it's good to use an academic example. Consider that a teacher is working with a student on a brand new skill. Two plus two. After instruction, the teacher asks the student about two plus two and the student hesitates before offering a reluctant answer of four. If the teacher does not say yes or in some other way acknowledge the student is correct, the student would have no way of knowing whether to continue with that response of two plus two equals four in the future. Importantly, students who have experienced the most failure in school often need the highest rates of positive feedback. Now consider that we are teaching behavioral expectations across the school as part of PBIS. The logic of using positive feedback becomes much more clear. All instruction requires feedback to be effective. Something in the environment needs to communicate yes when a student gets an academic answer correct. Of course, our ultimate goal is that our students learn to discern from themselves the correctness and value of their behavior, whether social or academic. But to help the process along, we as teachers must frequently let students know when they have done something well. This should be done in levels, beginning at the verbal and working up only as data indicate the need for more. At any moment in time in the school, there is nothing that provides a larger effect size and probability of increased student success than simple verbal acknowledgement of success. This is often referred to as praise, but it can be as simple as thanks or that's correct. Even a nonverbal thumbs up and a smile. But think about your own students, those with disabilities or those with mental health challenges. Those students may prefer feedback to be more private or may prefer a pat on the back to a verbal expression. While your students with autism, for example, may have sensory differences that make verbal or physical reinforcement adverse. Knowing your students' background, preferences, and needs is key to using reinforcement effectively. 
To increase effect, it is recommended that feedback be specific and that adults use students' names and use positive feedback as an opportunity to also build positive relationships. But importantly, positive feedback only happens after positive behavior. Good instruction sets us up to use positives more often. A second layer of reinforcement involves simply making the acknowledgement larger and more public. Clearly, some students will not want to be called out in front of their peers for fear of being called teacher's pet or worse. So again, it's important to know your students to consider what might be most reinforcing for each of them. While someone may not want to be called out publicly, they may still want a certificate, a note home to parents, or an opportunity to sign the Wall of Fame. All of these are simple and free examples of how reinforcement can be increased. Remember to include every student in your school when considering public acknowledgement. While tickets, tokens, and tangible giveaways are not an essential component of PBIS, many schools do use these as part of their reinforcement plan. When planning the use of these types of reinforcements, there are some important considerations. First, it is recommended that tickets and tokens be distributed in a thoughtful and limited manner, rather than all day, every day, for every behavior. Use your data to find times and locations that are predictive of student misbehavior. Then reteach and use the tickets as reinforcement for positive behavior under those conditions. Second, use tickets in lottery systems so that you do not get stuck having to come up with hundreds of exchanges. In the lottery system, every ticket is one more chance to win a single prize. Third, rather than purchasing items, winners can gain access to school privileges, things that already exist. This might be the ability to have a homework pass, to sit at a special table, to have lunch with a preferred person, or even park in a special parking space. These are all a part of the school culture on a daily basis rather than a purchased tangible item. Finally, make sure you explicitly teach how to earn, how to redeem, and what the incentives are to all students in ways they can understand. For some students with disabilities and English language learners, this will likely include the use of visuals and repeated practice. As mentioned, there may be some on your team who oppose all reinforcement. Because there are lots of myths about reinforcement out there, it's worth talking through a few of the most frequent and to discuss what an appropriate response might be. There may be some who claim that research does not support the use of reinforcement procedures. While this may be true when reinforcement is used incorrectly, the evidence in favor of positive feedback during instruction is overwhelming and not debatable in a logical manner. Others may claim that reinforcement prevents students from internalizing their success. This means that students won't ever believe in themselves if someone is praising their performance. But this is also illogical. How would a student have success or know that a success had occurred unless a teacher told them so? Teachers facilitate student success and reinforcement in a manner of giving the credit for that success back to the student. Another common refrain from opponents of reinforcement is that it's unrealistic to think that anyone needs to hear praise because it won't happen in the real world. Again, we are talking about using praise as a manner of letting students know that they are successful, building success and confidence to create independence. Finally, some may claim that reinforcement inhibits creativity, but does this even make sense given that a student would first have to have a skill in order to be creative with that skill. If we don't teach a student to hold a paintbrush and how to use the paint, the probability of that student becoming creative is lower. Now that you know about responding to positive behavior, the next module will dive into responses to negative behavior, and future modules will discuss how data can be used to assess the effectiveness of both.